we go. This is Mike Nunley, and we're with Mike Nunley Getting Real. Uh, I'm sitting here. I've got my tech guy, Alec, in the background, setting everything up, getting us ready to go. So before I get started, I uh, would like to say that i uh, really like to have you guys catch me on Instagram. That's Mike.podcast. And uh, our Facebook is Mike Nunley. And we're also now on Spotify and YouTube. So you can catch us on Spotify, YouTube, and it's Mike Nunley, Getting Real, G-E-T-T-I-N, Getting Real. And uh, when you do catch us on uh, Spotify or YouTube or Instagram, please like, subscribe, or follow. We really need your support, and uh, we really appreciate you. So today, we're going to talk about some some life issues, the thing with with life and talking about life talking about life issues is first of all it's a very popular subject a lot of people try to hit on on life type talk topics and you know what is life how do you find happiness in life you know how do you make life you know exactly what you want life to be and the interesting part about it is there's hundreds of thousands of books written over the years about life about getting the most out of life you know understanding life and it surprises me that so many books have been written yet apparently nobody has found the exact key to what life is and what life's supposed to be and i'm going to talk a little bit about this and i don't have any clear-cut answers I don't have, you know, the magic wand that's going to uh, enable you to understand life in in all aspects. You know, I'll leave that to some of the, you know, people who are writing the books or some of the, uh, you know, motivational speakers that you know feel or think that they've got a handle on it, but. I will tell you this, that it is not a difficult journey. It is not something that takes a lot of time or a lot of effort to find a path or find your way or find your happiness or find your joy or find your way out of sadness or find your way out of depression. The keys are very simple. And I think as most things in life, we take the simple and then we create a bigger issue of it than needs to be. I think we make it more complicated than we need to make it. Um, Let's take life. What is life? I sent out to a group of friends here a while back um, a question. And the question was very simple. What is life to them? And I didn't let them answer it on on the group text where I I put everybody on. Everybody had to answer individually because I didn't want the pressure and I didn't want, you know, everybody to think they had to come up with something really slick and really fancy. So I went through all of these and there was there weren't quite. 50 but you know pretty close to it just enough for me to get a feel for what people think and while their verbiage wasn't necessarily the same the essence of what they were talking about was identical what everybody was striving for had to do with emotion and I've always thought this for a long period of time. I've always thought that you know, what life is, is life is just emotion. And when you talk about emotion, you got to understand, what are we talking about? What is emotion? You know, if you look it up, and you can actually Google this, you know, not surprisingly, but you can Google words depicting emotion. And of course, you're going to get happiness and you're going to get joy and you're going to get love and you're going to get sadness and you're going to get depression you're going to get jealousy and you're going to get all the key words that we already know and understand to be 
emotion. But when you think about emotion in life, you don't create emotion. Emotion is almost like an innate type of feeling that just happens. It's like love. You cannot cognitively think about and force yourself to feel love. Love is going to happen. Love is going to be there for you. It's going to come out of nowhere. I met my wife standing behind her at Starbucks and fell in love almost immediately. I could feel it. I could feel it inside me. I can feel the 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 butterflies. I could feel the the you know the 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 feeling that love gets when you first meet somebody and for days afterwards you can't shake them. You can't get them out of your head. That's all you're thinking about. That's all you want to do. You know, I can remember after we start talking and then we exchange numbers and things start going really well. Oh, my God, we would text until like two o'clock in the morning. I'd have to get up at 430 and go to work the next day. But it didn't matter to me because I was in love. That's a strong emotion. And the other side of that is sadness. And how many people, you know, that feel sad feel sadness fat sadness is you know borderline goes into depression and you know all these other emotions that are tied into it fear so sadness is another one of those emotions that just overwhelms you it comes to you you're not cognitively thinking i'm going to be sad sadness just comes to you it's emotion it just it just appears so in life, when you have emotion, emotion then, once it comes to you, once it happens to you, once you feel it, that's when you start thinking about the emotion. It's not the other way around. You don't think about emotion and then it creates it. Emotion creates thought. So if you have thought, let's go back to love. You have that thought of love and or you have the emotion of love and then you have this thought oh my god i'm feeling like i am in love now you have a choice which brings us to another important part of life life is about choices that's all it is you have choices every single day of your life you have multiple choices i wouldn't even venture to guess how many choices we make in any given day from the moment you choose to get your butt out of bed to get ready to go to work and you put your jeans and your boots on and you walk out the door how many choices did you make you made the choice to get up you made the choice of what to wear you made the choice of what you're going to have for breakfast or if you're even going to have breakfast you made the choice to comb your hair or not comb your hair put a hat on you made the choice, brush my teeth or throw a stick of gum in your mouth. I don't know. You just, you made choices throughout your entire day. But when it comes to life and it comes to emotion, emotion creates thought. Thought at that point then creates your choice. Which direction are you going to go? So with love, you have that feeling. You have that, that, that sense. So what do you do? Do you take the risk? Do you jump? Do you go both feet in? I did. I did with Jill. I'm standing behind this cute little lady in Starbucks. And I bought her her coffee. And fortunately for me, she was willing to sit down and talk to a complete stranger over coffee. That was a two and a half hour conversation that we had. I took a risk. I had the feeling. I had the emotion. I took the risk. And it paid off. Further that story is I had gone through a really bad breakup a year before. This, a whole nother set of emotions. The sadness, the grief, the depression. All of those emotions flooding in on top of you. 
Now it's kicking up again. What do you do with that? It's a thought process. How do I handle this sadness? Do I wallow in the sadness? Do I just allow it to overtake me? Allow the sadness to, and the depression to control my world, control everything that I am doing? Or do I cognitively think about this sadness, think about the sadness, think about what it create, how it was created? What can I do? How do I fix this problem? What's my solution? Those are my choices. I can either wallow in it or I can find a solution to it, work through it, and come out the other end intact and better for it. That's what I did. I chose to fight it. I chose to get away from it. I chose at that point in time, I need to go get some counseling. I need to talk to somebody. I need to air my feelings, air my thought. That was a choice. That was a cognitive choice on my part to fix an emotional situation that I didn't seek. I didn't want it. I didn't want the sadness. I didn't want the feeling of emptiness. I didn't want, I want to be happy. So I worked on it. It was a choice. It was a thought process. So Let's keep this in mind as we move through this. Emotions happen. They can just show up like they did for me at Starbucks. They can come from somebody else that says something to you that generates an emotional reaction, an emotional response, an emotional feeling. And this is where it gets confusing for some people because they will look at that, that person caused me sadness. That person made me so angry. That person made me really happy. So they want to blame and give credit for how they're feeling to somebody else. Okay, somebody else said something that invoked this emotional feeling for them. But what they chose to do with that feeling is 100% totally up to themselves. So if I make Alec here angry, if I say something that invokes anger in him, he cannot come back to me and say, you made me so angry. I didn't make him angry. He chose to be angry. It's a thought process at this point. He can choose to be angry. He can choose to blow it off. He can choose to completely ignore it. Those are his choices. I did not make him angry. He chose to be angry. So when you hear people and they're saying, this person made me angry. This person made me happy. It's basically what they're saying is, hey, you know, it'd be, let's take Alec, for example. If I said something to him that invoked that sense or that feeling of anger, and he comes back and tries to tell me I made him angry, basically what he's saying is, you know what, Mike? I cannot control my own feelings and my own emotions. So here, I'm going to give them to you, and you tell me how I'm supposed to feel. No, it's not my job. All I said, hey, dude, I don't like your beard. He chose to take that in the, in, the, in, in the wrong way or however he chose, you know, to hear it or take it. And it created that sense of anger in him. Then when that happened, then he needed to think about it. And, hey, Mike normally doesn't say stuff like that. You know, to me, what I wonder what it was. You know, I wonder why. I, wonder, well, I haven't trimmed it in a while. Maybe that's what it is. You know, he, had, he could work through that thing if he chose to. Or he can take the easy route and just be angry. So what we're saying here is you're going to go through life and there's going to be a, a lot of situations where there's people that are going to say something that doesn't resonate real well with you. 
that's going to invoke a sense of sadness or it's going to invoke a sense of, of, of anger or it's going to, you know, just maybe, maybe it's going to invoke a happiness or a joy or it's going to be, I, I don't know, but you're going to come across that. That's living. Because when that stops, you're not living, you're just existing. Life is about emotion. Life is about feeling. Life is about putting yourself in situations where these feelings are going to come at you. And what we call that is a risk. When I was going into Starbucks and I had no intentions, I didn't, the furthest thing from my mind, in my mind, was I was going to go into Starbucks and I'm going to meet some girl and I'm going to hook up and eventually we're going to get married. That was not in my, my way of thinking. It was the furthest thing from what I was thinking. I was thinking I was going to go get a latte, you know, grab it, get back in my truck and go to work. So you never know what's going to happen. you got to be open for it. But if you're open for it, you also need to be ready and willing to take a risk. That's another aspect of life. It's another aspect that's tied into emotion. And most people steer away from taking risks. And why? Why? Because they're afraid. They're afraid of the outcome. They're afraid of what they're going to feel. They're going to fail, you know, be afraid of what they're going to see or how they're going to be. Or who knows? Everybody wants to equate risk taking to jumping out of an airplane with a parachute. Or maybe even now people jumping out of airplanes without parachutes. But nonetheless, everybody kind of thinks about risk taking as something that's crazy something that you know you're going to get on a dirt bike and go off of a ramp and do a you know a 360 somersault and you know and land 200 yards down the other way I, I i don't know but that's not what risk is yeah those are risks you're taking a life or death or an injury you know possible situation and you're taking a physical risk but what i'm talking about is emotion an emotional risk and every day we take these things and if you haven't been hurt in a relationship yet, you wait. It's coming. It's coming to everybody. It's going to happen. You're going to be hurt. You're going to be sad. You're going to be depressed. You're going to be whatever it is in the relationship. It's a sense of loss. So you get through it. You come out the other side. Then you run into a Jill at a Starbucks. Now you got a choice. You got a choice. Okay, you've got the you've got the emotion. You got the feeling. I'm looking at her and thinking, you know, she'd kill me if she was in here, you know, listening to me. But you know, I looking at her and think she's the hottest thing I've ever seen. You know, so I got a choice now. I just came out of a bad a bad breakup, a, a situation that I don't ever want to repeat again. Do I take that risk? Do I take that risk of going through that again? Do I take that risk of being hurt again? Do I take the risk of, of putting my, my feelings and my emotions on the line? Because I've got no control over the emotion. Zero. That's life, man. That's life. That's what I'm telling you. That's, you're going you're gonna to feel emotion whether or not you want it or not. It's not a cognitive thought. You're not sitting there thinking up the emotion. The emotion comes to you whether you're ready for it or not. And so that's what makes taking a risk really difficult. Do I throw myself in on this thing? Well, I chose to. I chose to. Because, you know what? I am not going to live my life by myself because I'm afraid something may happen. Because if something does happen, I have enough confidence in me, in myself, and in my ability that I'll figure out a solution and I'll fix it if something comes up. 
have confidence in yourself that you can handle every situation that comes down your down the pack to you no matter what it is you have to have faith in yourself as a person that you're strong enough to withstand all the rocks and arrows and gunshots that are coming at you rhetorically speaking i hope you have to be willing to take a risk knowing that if the worst came to, to fruition, you're strong enough to weather the storm and come out the other side. I was just talking to Alec before we went on the air. We were talking about, you know, my life. You know, I'm 68 years old, you know. I've been through life already, and I still have another 50 years to go, so I have no idea what I'm going to be faced with at that, at that point in time. But, during my, my tenure, during my, during my lifetime, I've had a lot of really, really good things happen to me. I've made a lot of really good choices. I've had a lot of fun, a lot of excitement, a lot of experiences. Conversely, I've had a lot of shit. I've been through a lot, made a lot of bad choices. Fortunately for me, I've made a lot more good choices than I have bad choices, but I have taken a lot of risk in my life. Business risk, financial risk, relationship risk, sports risk. I've taken a lot of risk in my life. And some of them haven't turned out real well. But others have turned out amazing. You can't be afraid of taking a risk. Because unless you're taking risk in life, taking risk with your heart, taking risk with your soul, taking risk with you as a person, giving it to somebody else, being vulnerable. If you haven't taken a risk in being vulnerable, you're not living yet. That's not about life. That's about existing. You need to be vulnerable. I tell people all the time, when I come on this podcast, I'm I'm freaking naked. I'm here by myself. I'm here telling, unless I have a guest here, this is me. This is raw. This is me. Just there's you don't see that I don't have a piece of paper. I don't have, you know, something written on the wall behind me. This is all here. This is all just just coming out of me. And if I screw it up. If I use the wrong word, if I use the wrong the, the wrong word in the wrong way, if I stutter, if I have a break, if I do whatever, it's all here for everybody to see. That's a risk. I don't like I don't like failing in I don't like failing at all. Nobody does, but I don't especially like failing in front of people. I don't want to fail in front of I'd love to say the millions of viewers that are watching this, but, you know, I don't want to fail in front of the 20 viewers that are watching this. I just don't want to fail. But it's not going to keep me from doing something that I want to do. I am not going to live my life in emotional fear. If I have fear, I want to be cognitive or cognitive of, see, there I go, screwing up a word, of the fear itself. What can I do? How can I think? How can I find a solution to this fear? That's what I want to do. I want to rise above it. I don't want to give in to it. I don't want to give in to emotion. Even if it's happy. Think about this. You're going, well, why wouldn't you want to give in to happy emotion? Because I want to think about it. I want to think about, okay, where's this happiness coming from? It could be short-term happiness that is actually destructive. You know? I, 
I walked into Starbucks. I met my beautiful wife. Great relationship, great marriage. We have great kids. We have just, you know, just an, an amazing life for us. There's a lot of people that would look down at our life or our lifestyle or, you know, where, where we're at. I mean, you know, we're not f flying in private jets and we don't live in a 10,000 square foot home. And, you know, we just, we're just average people, normal people, people like you, people like me, people that I relate to. That's us. But we got a great life. Now, I can walk into Starbucks tomorrow on my way to work. My wife's at home and have some lady look at me and flirt with me and, and make me feel good about myself. I mean, everybody likes that. Everybody likes to feel like they're attractive. Hey, there's a sense of happiness there, okay? Follow me on this. That's happiness. There's some joy involved in that. But I have to be aware of it and I have to think about that. Do I just run with that happiness? No. I got to think about it. I go, man, this is, this. I'm feeling pretty happy right now. But I see this road going down the path. And my beautiful wife finds out that, you know, I'm messing around or I got somebody that's showing interest in me. I'm telling you what, that little jealous Italian woman is going to make my life really hard. So it's like, oh, thank you for making me happy. I really appreciate that. And I'll go and I'll walk away. So happiness isn't always something that is good. It's a good feeling. It's a good emotion. But you need still to think about it just like you would sadness. Emotions are there for you to think about. Emotions are life. Emotions are living. Whether it's the fear of jumping out of an airplane and you think about that and your adrenaline's going and you're scared out of your mind. And you're thinking, okay, I packed my own chute. They, they doubled this up. You know, I got a backup. I got a reserve chute. I got all these things. Okay, man, you know, the odds are I'm going to land back on the ground and I'm going to be a happy camper because I really pushed the limits of my fear. Boom, that's it. You're out the door, no turning back. Or maybe it's a little bit too much for you. Maybe that's a little bit too much risk. Maybe that's a little bit too much fear. You're not really ready for it. You sit back down, you take a plane ride, lands back on the ground, you get off, you feel safe, you feel, you know, your heart's right, or your heart rate is right back to where it's supposed to be. You made a decision. That's what emotions are supposed to do. Emotions are supposed to invoke thought process. Thought processes at that point are supposed to give you choices on direction to go, right way, left way, whatever that it is. That's what life is. So you can read all the books. People have said to me over the years, as I have you know, tried to give some advice, tried to give some wisdom, you need to write a book. You need to write a book about all your thoughts, all your mic-isms, all your whatever. First of all, I'm never going to write a book. Don't want to write a book. To me, it sounds the most horrible thing in the whole world to do. But... Even if I were to write a book about this particular case, about emotions being life, about emotions invoking thought, thought creating choices. Think about it. I'd have the first book that would be a page and a half. That's all it takes. So I'm telling you, this is so simple. There's nothing really huge about what I'm trying to explain. So if you're feeling something, if you're feeling, there, there are people that are feeling sadness on a daily basis. So that means that every day they're feeling this emotion of being sad. So that means every day they're going through a thought process of this sadness. And this is now they have a choice once again on another day. And this is day 30, day 45. This is a year. This may be two years. And they're just reliving the same thing over and over. But they're choosing to stay in that darkness. They're choosing to be in this point 
of of darkness and sadness and grief and whatever that it is. I'm not telling you that life isn't about some sadness. It is. It definitely is. You go through a breakup like I was explaining. You lose a, a, a loved one to, you know, to to death or cancer or, you know, to to something that, you know, there's sadness. There really is. But you have to find ways to continue living. If you're going through a bad breakup, yeah, okay, it's tough. It's arduous. It's emotional. But you have to figure a way to get out of it because you cannot live in it. And what I find is really detrimental is when people do live in it. And it's almost as though the people that choose to live in it are living in it because they are enabled to live in it. They have figured out that if I tell people how sad I am, that this wasn't fair, I didn't create this, I didn't want this, and I'm sad, people put their arms around me. And they feel sorry for me. And they let me talk to them. And they let me explain my grief. They let me explain my, 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 my sadness and my depression. And so what ends up happening is it's like it becomes a warm blanket because they chose to go that direction. It becomes a warm blanket to them. Their sadness, their depression becomes a warm blanket because people are coming to them and loving on them. Oh, it's okay. It's so bad. I'm so sorry. What can I do to help you? How can I create? The and it will go on and on. If you're really a good friend and you do have somebody that's going through sadness, what you need to do is you need to talk to them and pull them out of their sadness and pull them out of the darkness. And you need to tell them how amazing life is. You need to tell them all the possibilities that they still have in their world and in their life and that they they are giving up way too soon. That it's okay to feel this way, but you pull yourself out of it. Pull yourself out of it. And every day, take another step forward. And it's not going to happen overnight. And yeah, you're going to have the sadness. You're going to have some bouts. But you know what? If you're, you're conscious of your thought process and you keep moving forward and forward sooner or later, you're in the daylight and you're looking back at the darkness. That's life. That's how human beings are. I had somebody ask me one time what I wanted, what I wanted in my life. I said happiness. And they said, well, it's impossible. You can't be happy all the time. My answer to that is why not? Why? Why can't I be happy all the time? It's my choice. It's my choice. I can, I'm happy right now. I'm happy here. I'm talking in front of you. I got my friend Alec is sitting here. Life is good. Life is good. My wife's waiting for me at home. Everything is, everything is the way that it's supposed to be. My whole world is just in, in perfect balance. If something were to happen tomorrow, and I'm driving down the street, and I'm driving a little bit too fast, and I get pulled over, and I get a ticket. Am I going to let that ticket wipe away my happiness? Oh, hell no. Do I want the ticket? No. I have to pay the fine. I have to deal with the insurance later. Whatever that it is that it causes some you know, inconvenience. But am I going to let that take away the happiness and the joy that I feel on a daily basis? No. And I'm not saying that every day I'm successful at it. I'm not saying that every day I'm walking through life just happy and bubbly. No, I'm a working man. I have stresses. I have, I have things that are going on. I have, I have work issues. You know, I've got 17-year-old twin daughters at home. You know, right there. You know, I don't have to even explain that. But I work through it. Because my goal every day is to be happy. Do Jill and I get along every single day? No. No. For some reason or another, she doesn't see things my way. Don't understand it. But no, I'll kid you aside. But, you know, we don't always see eye to eye. And we may get in a little tiff. But our tiffs are going to last about five minutes because neither one of us want to fight. Neither one of us want to be unhappy. And neither one of us want to have that cloud over our household. 
It's a choice. It's a choice that you make. That that emotional feeling of anger, of sadness, of whatever it is, is a choice. And it's not always easy to rid yourself of, but you have to try. It's like you look at our world today. I'm not a very, I'm, I'm political in my views, but you'll never hear me discuss my views on a podcast. My views, my political views, they're not up for debate. They're my views. I'll keep them to myself. When you don't keep something to yourself, you're opening it up for debate then. And I don't really want to debate with anybody over politics. But I will say this. We're living in very strange times. We're living in a period of time when there's a lot of fear about the future. There's a lot of concern about the future. There's a big division going on about the present. How I deal with this, I deal with this simply by telling myself, I don't believe what I hear. I only believe what I see. Meaning, they can be telling me all kinds of information or misinformation or whatever that it is to that is being generated by the 1%. And I choose not to hear it. That's noise. That's noise that I don't want to hear, I don't want to deal with. I choose to believe what I see in my day-to-day life every single day. I'm fortunate in what I do for a living. I'm not always you know, sedentary. I don't stay inside of an office. I go out to a lot of job, job sites. I, I meet a lot of people. And I am telling you, from a guy that will probably talk to 50, 60 people or more a day, I don't think I ever run across anybody that is truly belligerent or mean or has any feelings of anger and division that I'm hearing about. I only see hardworking men and women that are out there busting their butt, making a paycheck so they can go home and they can pay their mortgage and they can buy groceries for their family and they can raise their children and put their children through school. And this is not, this has absolutely zero to do with race, nationality, social economic background. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter where they live. Doesn't matter where they where they work, what they do for work. They're there doing one thing, one thing only. And everybody that I come across, everybody that I come across has chosen to be a decent human being to one another. So again, I choose not to hear the noise. I choose not to hear what is being said. I only choose to believe what I see. And what I see is a lot of people trying to live their life in happiness. Because it's there and it's available. It's available to you. It's available to me. It's available to everybody. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter the color of your skin. It doesn't matter the nationality. It doesn't matter your religion. It doesn't matter your social economic situation. Happiness is happiness. It's God-given. It's there. It's there for you. So it's your choice. It's an emotion. And you can feel it. And when you feel it, you have the choice. Do I want more of this? Or do I want to live in sadness? Do I want to put that warm blanket over me? And continue being sad. Continue living in depression. Continue allowing people to enable me 
to be sad all the time rather than pull myself up by the bootstrings and say, no, I am not doing this anymore. I choose to be happy and I will do everything and anything I need to do to live a happy, joyful existence. So when you see people, look at them. Look at them. And if they smile at you, that little smile is going to invoke an emotion. You're going to feel it. That's nice. That's joy. That's happiness. That's kindness. Now you're thinking, what do I do? What are my choices here? I can ignore him or her. Or I can acknowledge them and send kindness back to them. That's what we live our life for. Every single day we have a choice. We have a choice to receive emotion. And also every single day we have the opportunity and the choice to do and say certain things to invoke emotion in other people. Again, your choice. What type of emotion do you want to invoke in somebody else? Do you want to invoke sadness and grief and fear? That's what the 1% wants. Not me. Not the majority of people that I see. We want to give happiness. We want to give joy. We want to give kindness. So that is what life is. Life is to us, human beings, all about emotion. And emotion creates thought. And with thought, you have choices. Make the right choices. Be nice. Be kind to each other. Find your happiness. And when you do, you're going to feel the joy that that happiness brings you. And share that joy with somebody else so that they feel the emotion of happiness and they make the same choice and they share it. It's reciprocal. Let's all do it. Let's all create this movement of happiness and joy. Let's replant the seed of love with that stay strong mentally emotionally and spiritually if you like our podcast Alec and I would love it if you would either like it subscribe to it or follow it peace we love y'all